Hey everybody, it's December 4th and just got done at church and so I wanted to give you a recap of what the sermon was here at the Gate Church, 7700 North Council out here in Oklahoma City. Uh, we had a guest preacher today named Tommy McGee, he's a bishop from the International Pente Pentecostal Holiness uh, Church, just down the street in Bethany. And the title of his sermon um, is This Christmas I Choose to Win. And uh, with a with a title like that, you think, oh, this is just going to be a motivational uh, sermon, you know, and, uh, and not have much teeth to it. But uh, there there is definitely things that we can learn from in here. Um, so the uh, <coughs> the the scripture the uh, sermon's based off of uh, is out in Philippians three uh, verse seven through uh, through fourteen. So I'll read that. It's uh, Paul. Uh, writing here in Philippians and it says uh, but what things were gained to me these I have counted lost for Christ yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead not that I have already attained or am already perfected but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And so, uh, the, the, the big push in his sermon from here is the, the pressing forward towards the goal and the call of, of Christ in your life and uh, and so uh, the the first question he asked in his sermon was uh, why can't this Christmas be different this year um, and uh, meaning if there's things that have been uh, keeping you from progressing as a Christian um, it this Christmas can be different um, you know Christ came and uh, he, he didn't uh, come so that you could stay the same. He came so that you can become a child of God and become a different creature than you actually are um, when you're born on this earth. Uh, you know, a spiritual creature able to break the chains of the devil in the world. Um, and so in order to uh, get to that place where you're winning spiritually, um, you have to choose the right principles, practices, and people to be around you to help make that happen. Um, that, that's a basic thing. And, uh, and so he said, uh, you know, you have to have like a life coach and that's where he brought Paul into the picture. And, uh, he said, uh, the example of Paul, uh, Paul, uh, was a, a, a Jewish Pharisee who was basically a terrorist to the Christians who were there, um, uh, you know, becoming Christians after Christ ascended. And, um, he would drag Christians out of their house to prison for being Christians. And, uh, you know, he, he sat in, and approved of Christians being killed and held the, the coats of uh, people throwing the stones, killing the Christians. Um, and then after he had an encounter with, uh, with Christ, um, knocked him off his donkey, he was converted. He became a terrorist to the gates of hell. And he was dragging people, not from their houses to prison, but from the prisons, the spiritual prisons that they were in in sin and uh, bringing them to life in Christ. Um, and so uh, looking looking at that as an example um, in, in what Paul wrote in Philippians, Paul said that he, he doesn't uh, say that he's already perfected, he's still pressing on. And, and so in that, uh, what Tommy pulled out was that uh, Paul had a dissatisfaction in his life that he wasn't going to stay where he was in order that he could actually achieve the call of God in his life and uh, in our church they've been preaching a lot about dissatisfaction in a that it's not good for you but in reference to being dissatisfied with what you have uh, the Bible teaches that you should be content with what you have but in this in this passage it it references the fact that you should not be content with 
who you are or where you are in life because there's there's always something that God can shape off your life that doesn't look like him as long as you're in this earth and you got to be willing to recognize that because if you if you stay who you are right now for the rest of your life you are most likely hindering the work of God and the people around you because um, who you are today is a good tool for today but a week from now a year from now ten years from now you have to be a more developed tool a more developed person in order to shape the world around you and uh, and actually do something for God and so um, that's that was his first uh, first point in the principles of winning and to, that you have to have a, a holy dissatisfaction and uh, and you can't be complacent with where you're at uh, the second is that you must be uh, devoted and that you know he was uh, saying um, that uh, we know what is important in life but we need to make what is important in life important in our lives and uh, he referenced Martha uh, with Mary and Martha where Mary was at the feet of Jesus and Martha was concerning herself with all the chores of the household even, instead of sitting down at the feet of Jesus and listening to him. Um, and so that's being covered about by all the cares of this world. And really there was one important thing at that moment in time that was sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to what he had to say because that had direct reference to what she needed to know for her life. <laughs> <laughs> the very God who made all creation was sitting there talking to him. her sister and, and Martha was in the kitchen cleaning dishes. Uh, she was not in the, uh, in the right place. Uh, she needed to be in the living room with Jesus and her sister. And, uh, and so uh, he, and then he referenced uh, David as saying in the Psalms that uh, he had this one thing that, and this one thing that he desires is that he may dwell in the house of the Lord and serve him forever. And so, um, at, at, with that thought, uh, in, in the house of the Lord, you have all the, the providence you need. And if you serve the Lord, you will do everything that is correct for you to do. You don't have to question if you're missing opportunities. You don't have to wonder if you're going to have enough for what you need. You're in the house of the Lord, the God of all creation. He made everything that there is. So you don't have to care for what you will eat or wear or uh, a roof over your head. You have that. And then the only thing that's important after that is what will you do? And that's what God provides for you to do. That is it. Um, and uh, in, in my life, uh, I've, you know, I, I've been able to look around and realize the work is around me. I just need to get into it and not concern myself with my cares. I need to concern myself with God's cares. And that's for other people. Uh, the next point he had uh, for for uh, choosing to win in a godly way uh, is direction. And uh, he had uh, three parts in this. And the first one is we've got to move beyond our sinful past. Um, he said that some people brag about who they used to be. You know, if you offend them, they say, oh, if, if you had met me before I was a Christian, I would have cut you. I would have roughed you up. I would have uh, messed up your face. Um, and that's that's bragging about who you used to be uh, in a way that's that's not right. You don't need to keep bringing that up because now you're a new creature who doesn't desire that anymore, and you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't tell people that if you weren't a child of God, you'd you'd cut them because that person doesn't exist anymore. Uh, some people drag their past around and they're unable to move past um, who they were because they're ashamed of it. Um, and the truth is, is that that person doesn't exist anymore either. God's taken away every sin. Uh, he's, he's washed it clean and, and paid for those sins with the son's blood. So you're not that person anymore either that you have to be ashamed. You're a new creation. Um, and then he said, uh, direction that we have to move is uh, beyond our suffering past. There's people, uh, who have uh, done wrong to you, wrong to your family. Um, uh, to where you're you're carrying around um, uh, resentment and anger, um, uh, you, you're wanting to get even, uh, things like that. And he told a lady about he told about a lady named Elizabeth Mars whose son was killed by a drunk driver, and the drunk driver did not um, 
receive punishment beyond probation uh, from the trial. And, uh, you know, she, he said that the lady uh, was uh, very angry about this, uh, understandably, and that uh, she was coming to the point where she was fantasizing about killing the guy with, with her car, pinning him against a tree and, and, and killing him. And so uh, she was in prayer and, and uh, she was asking God, you know, um, how, how do I deal with this? And um, God's response to her was, uh, um, I, I have a son too. And, he, and the, the basic uh, notion in that response back was that God's son was also killed by people and, and they... Um, they didn't understand the the pain that that caused God, but he, he, what she said that God said back to her, was that God said, "I have a son too," and in the same way that my son asked me to forgive them, that's what your son wants you to do too. And so, what ultimately happened is that uh, she and her husband led this guy who killed their son in the accident to Christ and baptized him in the in the ultimate uh, showing of forgiveness it, it's a really incredible thing um, and uh, the third uh, point in under direction was that you have to move beyond your successful past and that's that's in the sense that if you if you've had success in, in God or success in life uh, you can't stay there and expect to be useful to anyone uh, you keep bragging about where your success was, so uh, we we have to move on uh, to new things to, and new challenges that God has for us. Because if we succeeded in one thing, he, God wants us wants to take us to where we can be successful in another area for more of His work. Uh, the fir fourth uh, point is determination, and this is where uh, He was referring to the Scripture again. And he says that Paul uh, presses on in the same way that. Uh, uh, a, a sprinter runs in the Olympics. Um, it, he was he was drawing a, a connection to the fact that uh, the sprinter in the Olympics doesn't run to become a citizen of the country. He's running for. He runs because he is a citizen, and uh, he doesn't run uh, so that he can uh, win anything for himself. Really, it, it's to bring honor to his country and and to uh, uh, where he comes from. And so he, um, he was putting that in the point that um, as a child of God, you are not running to earn your father's recognition. He already recognizes you. You already are a child of God. And uh, your point of running uh, is, is to win, and it's to win in an honorable way uh, to honor your father, not to bring honor to yourself. Um, and that's... that's uh, what brings true glory uh, to your life is that you're, it's not for you that you're doing it. It's for uh, your God and the people around you that you want to do well uh, so that you can expand the kingdom of God on the earth. Uh, so uh, he ended it with, uh, consider how much time is left on the clock you may not know. And and so uh, don't, don't be con consumed or contained with the things that have uh, kept you back before. Um, he referred to a, uh, a, a an African pastor that was uh, that was killed for being a Christian, and uh, there's a letter that was found on him that um, went through a long list, and it was very good. I, I wish I could recount it to you. Um, of because he is a Christian, he will not give up, and he will not uh, he will not stand down uh, because the the stakes are too high. As God is too good uh, to shut up and not say something about this great God that will take every sinner back and make him a child of God and, and redeem every everything that every worst quality you could ever think about to change that person's life and welcome them into the gates of heaven. So, in conclusion, uh, being comfortable is not an option. Uh, don't worry about your own uh, comfortability, your own safety. Um, because in the end, uh, you shouldn't uh, fear those that can uh, can harm your body but can't take your soul. So, in closing, that was uh, church today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.